you were like, I stand on my principles take it or shit. not take it or leave it or fuck off. That's how you've lived your whole life. Yeah, but until yeah, but not. I wouldn't say fuck off as much now. No, 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 no. I'm saying but, like you would. You were just you. Like you didn't give a fuck if somebody did. Like, <laughs> You like it just didn't matter, bro. Yeah, like but for me, I'm, I'm I was like much more diplomatic. Like I wanted to like much manipulate more. people into whatever is gonna make me, uh, whatever is gonna get me what I want from them. But yeah, and I was much more like, if you don't like what I'm saying, you can go straight yourself hard. <laughs> so so who, who's the older brother here? I'm the older brother. About a year. Yeah. yeah. One uh, year older. A year and a couple months. Same parents. Yep. yep. Mom and dad. Same mom and dad. Same mom and dad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Kenny, you uh, you you grew up with Daniel. Yep. In uh, what what, what are you guys from? Venice. Uh, right uh, yeah, Venice. Shore. Venice, right here in yeah, LA. Shore. And your parents were, were together till I was ten, so you were nine. No, I was six. So you, dad, you were seven or eight. You were seven. I promise you that, because Pat was three. Who, who, was, who, who was uh, a bigger problem for you guys? Your mom or dad? <laughs> oh, mom. 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 Mom's, yeah, but, but mom, I, and I think, I mean, I believe Daniel is more accepting of this as well. Like she suffers from Bad. severe mental illness. So yeah, like, I don't take any of it personal, but it wasn't pleasant. You know, <laughs> like she was... She was out there. She was, I mean, she... She had cocaine, she had a cocaine addiction and alcohol, and like Jack Daniels and Rocca. So like that combination is going to be a guaranteed bipolar disaster. Disaster. I remember white coats taking her out, bro. In well, Topanga and shit. White well, coats no, dragging her ass out of It seems like these drugs, I've, I've seen this on... Fuck people I'm, up, dude. They, she's from Florida. They'll so bring you know out cocaine. the schizophrenia or the, or the whatever mental illness. Yeah. Bipolar too, maybe? Her dad went missing though, remember? Yeah, he's named after our grandfather that we never met because he went missing when my mom was young. He like was smuggling cocaine from the Florida Keys to Panama, so that's the story. And he just never came back. One time, like on his third trip, he yeah. just never come back. So we were told. So mom got fucked up off that. I was told that fucked her up. We sure. were told at a young age that he was um, MIA. He was he was MIA. Yeah, was he was it, a merchant bro. marine, and he was MIA. Bullshit, Missing bro! That fool's fucking signed cocaine, dog. No, I know. The, the, oh the, yeah, the, yeah. Like, <laughs> so we were told at a young age that he was a merchant marine and he went MIA. I do remember. Okay, you're but right. then she she hid her drinking when she was with my dad because they were you know she was really into like religion and stuff. But like, which I I have spirituality. I think spirituality is a beautiful Dang. thing, but. Organize her organized like religion. Like I feel that people, some people with mental illness are very drawn towards specific denominational religion. So she was really into that. So she hid her drinking. So it was like you know, like our and friends, like she took pills too. Yeah, Remember her yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of she was car? prescribed like Valium. And yeah, stuff but she like had that. like seven kids, bro. So. Yeah, so she was kids. So I like, remember like one of like one of our friends in handle. elementary school being like saying like like your mom smells like Uncle De <laughs> Uncle Joey. And, and like later on we come to find out like Uncle Joey is a drunk, you yeah. know? So but then like later when she leaves my dad, like in a like she left him for a reason. She it was like midlife crisis, like let her freak flag fly. That's why she <laughs> went, like, with my uncle Jerry because he was a nut, you know. Yeah, you, and you, so, you told me about your uncle Jerry. He was he was wild. Oh, he's fucking nuts. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle he was Bobby. fucking nuts. Living in Topanga. Was, you know what? He was so crazy. This is how twisted this dude was. He would literally say, "Bitch, stop yelling at my brother's kids." To my mom. Yeah. Pat once called him Uncle Dad. You said that in another video, and it's weird. Yeah, like, that's weird as fuck. Because really our cousins weird. were like. You know, like first cousins, they're like, we're not brother yeah. sister. But like, they were older, it. they were really good to us. Our older cousins, Hallie and Jeremy, fucking looked out, and, and Brian looked out for us yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They looked out for all, us tough because they knew it was all twisted. They were teenagers. They're like, this is all bad. You know, like, she. Well, he was like a fall drink down drunk and like weird, and they would fight, but he was guns, always though. kind to us. Us, yeah. He never, yeah, he was ever, always kind ever to us. stepped a line with us, ever. He was so sweet to us. But he had problems and, with the law and problems with. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an outlaw for sure, one hundred percent. He sold cocaine out of Marco Polo's. The, it was an old pizza sh- like pizza shop slash bar at the top of Topanga. Yeah, and he's him and it was like, my, and my was uncle like Ronnie the only was place too. back then too. It was like when we would like stay with her in summers, like that. I don't know why, but that's like it was like the. I think that was like the only place, or you had to go down to the valley or down to the PCH. Yeah, it was like Marco Polo's Pizza. And so, yeah, I guess that was he, before, like the the like um at the bar up there. <laughs> Do you remember when he was a what did he call a travel agent? A travel agent, dude. Dude, <laughs> dude the dude had two. I swear to God, he had two pistols that they were nickel plated. They looked like chrome, and he had them, and he wore a suit. This dude had one eye, bro. Like and long red hair and a ponytail, right? And so my dad has eight. Like there's eight boys and two girls. So there were all these brothers that were like, you know, half of them were gnarly, the other half were like kind of not. They were squares, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, so um, he would be, um, I'm a tra- he showed up in his the Mercedes. He was working for that landlord that he pulled out of the jacuzzi and put the pistol to yeah. his head. He was like, what'd you fucking, dude. dude he can't Yeah, he pulled the landlord out of the jacuzzi by his hair and put the pistol in his face. I was Who like, Who do you think you're this? fucking talking to? Dude, yeah, you dumb rich motherfucker. With, yeah, he was like, yeah. <laughs> that was nuts, bro. Yeah. That was nuts. We were kids, and we, like our moms inside, like stay inside. And we're yeah, like, was, like in the window, like the watching park. and pistol with our landlord. We're he, living in the pool house. That he was, was no like fun. On the, he was like living on the property. Like that's how he paid his rent. Was like as like a landskeeper. And like the guy was like drunk one day in the jacuzzi, and he was like hollering at him, like, "Say Jerry, come, come on, on, come have fun, have jacuzzi. fun, he's like, party with us." To do. And he's like, "No, stop what you're doing, come now." And yeah, he was, like, like, he was his now? boss or some shit, yeah. and that did not <laughs> work with Uncle Jerry. Uncle Jerry ran from the cops on horseback in L.A. <laughs> in L.A. County. Like, what do you fuck? What do you mean? Like, cause like. The elementary school has these like dividers, like those things that stop cars from going around the gate to get into elementary school. So like my cousins and everybody knew you just on a dirt bike or a horse, you can just tuck into that that walkway and the cops can't, what are they gonna do? And then you can get, they knew the canyons like the back of their hand, they were born and raised there, you know? I mean, my cousins were, my uncle, they're all born and raised in Venice, my, my whole family. We've been out here for over a hundred years. My grandma died in 99 last year. So, yeah. So, so this talk is ma- mainly with Kenny. My bad. But no, but I couldn't resist putting Hutch in, in a chair yeah. next to you because you guys together are, are fun to listen to. Thanks for reminding me. So yeah, feel, feel, no. No, feel, free, feel free to chime in all you like. No, yeah. no. But, but so, Kenny, you, you, you work in treatment now. Yes. Yeah. So you guys exactly. both got involved in drugs. Yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. Together yeah. or different out times? Together, yeah. you, guys, huh? you guys started around the same time with drugs or? Yeah, yeah. I was, I mean, uh, he was real young when he went to the military. So we were drinking. I always drank heavily when I drank, but like I was always under the impression, just like anybody else, like if you don't show up to like work drunk, then you're not, you're just a kid having fun. And and, and at that time it really was like, there was always, but what I realized was, is that we weren't or I don't think we were like everybody else. We didn't have, one group of friends. We had 20 or 30 groups of friends. So yeah. what I could do is like, oh, like everybody's taking it easy in this group, in this group, in this group. Oh, they're partying. So it didn't matter. Monday through Sunday, there was always somewhere Something to cracking, go where yeah. I could, where we could get lit. So yeah. And I, re- I remember my sister once like crying, like, like, you drink too much. And I'm like, I got a job. I got money in the bank. I don't know what you're talking about, but it was a lot, you know, I would drink it by the gallons and I would, and I would do like a, you know, to be honest, I was thinking about it when, when we were talking earlier, he, that is one good thing that he prompts me on is it's hard for me to remember Yeah, because I mean, between the the pills and the cocaine or the whatever, I remember for a while there was meth. That was Hawaii too, though, right? Hawaii, definitely. He lived in Hawaii before I did, like years before I did. Yeah, Hawaii, I went to Hawaii to get sober. And they came back like dying, bro, dying. (laughs) On so much methadone, like there was like flies on him. It was so bad. My dad was like, don't let my kid die. Yeah. And then I got you in treatment. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty wild and and I was doing like pretty much anything to keep the party going. So it didn't matter if it was like pill. You, I just thought of something that happened that was so weird. 
in Venice. So there was this little bar we would go to. And it was a local hangout and we liked it because um, they weren't real strict about carding back then. Um, so starting <laughs> going. Yeah. So, no, 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 oh, no, no. Really? That one you could get lost in the crowd or slip them a hundred. No, yeah. this was the other one uh, over uh, in like, uh, is that Culver City? No, over, over on that side, Washington side. Um, so I was over, God, I think it was there. I think. It could have been it could have been Culver City at that dirty dive bar. Anyways, I meet this chick and we're partying. And so I'll tell the story in order of the way it happened. So next thing I know, I'm in her room, things are getting good. I'm in she I'm I'm you know, being a lazy ass. I'm all fucked up on my back. She's in full mount doing the work. And she <laughs> fucking her something so we were doing a lot of blow that night <laughs> but her fucking eyes flipped like something happened and a different person appeared almost as if she jumped off and a new girl jumped on but it, she never did that and she comes up over me and I'm in <laughs> sex is great when they're on top and all but you're also very vulnerable. You just don't realize <laughs> yeah, it because obviously. you're so fucking pleasurable. <laughs> but you actually are in a very vulnerable position. You would never want a man sitting on you. I mean, I mean, I mean, if there's men that want to do that, that's cool. But I'm talking about like compromise in a violent situation. Worst case scenario, their mount, they got their legs on top of you like this, yeah, and you're true. on the bottom, and she just starts gunning me. <laughs> And I'm just, and I'm in full guard and I'm trying to buck her off. And I'm like, <laughs> and finally, like I get her off. I run out the door. So she was right off Speedway. So this is like Venice Beach, Beach. Yeah. Right. That's like and the alley this, behind the boardwalk. Like this yeah. old black guy, guy, is this old black guy smoking a blunt. And he's like, oh, PCP is a motherfucker. <laughs> and I look and I realize I'm fucking butt naked. So I'm like, I got to go back. Like I'm definitely not doing, I'm definitely not. Like LAPD's not hearing any story of me butt naked and a girl beat me up during sex. So like, I gotta get my clothes. Wallet <laughs> keys, everything's in there. So I go back, she's in the fetal position in the corner of the room. I swear to God, I didn't do anything to her. Like this was a normal transaction of uh, two human beings trying to have a beautiful moment <laughs> all fucked up out of their mind, you know what I mean? Like I didn't say nothing to her. I'm, I'm not kinky. I wasn't like you dirty little girl. I wasn't calling her my daughter. Like nothing weird happened. I'm not a vocal like sexual person. So I don't know what happened in that situation, but I come back and I'm just like, you can go talk to a therapist, talk to whoever you want. I'm gonna get my shit, I'm gonna go. The old black guy reminded me, I'm naked. So I hope all is good with whatever you got going on with you. So my birthday comes around and we're hanging out with a couple of people. I'm not sure if you were there or not. You know, uh, we Fresh like was five there. Years in my, like five years in my 20s were wiped you know fresh I mean? was there and a, and, a, and a couple other people and she darkens my door what does and that i mean? was uh, she appears at the fucking door <laughs> and we had like an open door policy because it was party whenever yeah, i wasn't party, working i yeah, always guns. worked always even sometimes like i would also do side jobs and stuff like that so 10 12 hours sometimes and then i would drink myself to sleep like drinking was necessary but is this she, when you live next door to pat yes yeah, so we lived next door to each other at one point, like me and my little brother, Pat, and then Kenny. So three full-blooded brothers all lived in one apartment building on the top. And then my cousin lived downstairs. My first cousin lived downstairs. Yeah. This was at that place? On yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. And the place was fun. Uh, and uh, she shows up at the door and I'm like, oh my God. And I'm hiding, right, in a room full of guns. I always had guns on yeah. me. I was like, I would carry, <clears throat> I have a possession of a deadly weapons charge. Like I would, I just... I, he liked guns. I personally, now that I'm sober, I won't like. I I, I want to get my CCW. I want to do it legally. I'm not going to illegally carry a firearm. 
I've, I've learned that there's consequences for everything that you do in life, good or bad. But at that time, gun time. I was pissed. Off <laughs> it was gun play. Because <laughs> I wasn't trying, like, I had gotten my head beat in before. I wasn't trying to have that happen again. Like, I, <laughs> I gave a sloppy. Anyways, let me finish this story. So this she chick shows up. And we have this friend and she's pretty, pretty gnarly. And she sees me run and hide in my room. And she's like, what? And this girl's like got balloons and flowers <laughs> and looks all sweet. And she's like, Kenny, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was like, tell that bitch to get the fuck out of the house. Tell you got to get rid of her. And so she like goes over there and she's like, oh, that's weird. I don't know why I just wanted to drop this off. And I'm like, how the fuck? And then I realized from the bar to her house, I stopped at the house to get blow. So whether it messes with your mind or it's just a part of the scenario, stimulants make everything weird. Like everything yeah. gets weird when there's stimulants involved. Yo, right. meth will fuck some shit up, dude. Meth will fuck some shit up. I shot meth one time and started shooting an AK through my walls in Hawaii. Boom, 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 boom. The neighbors were like, you got to fucking stop, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like babysitting my son. Okay, before shooters. we stepped in here, you were telling a story about meth and a girl in, in treatment. Oh, yeah. Working in, working in substance abuse is oh, the best yeah. and worst job you can have. So if you want to help people, it's the best job in the world. If you're doing it for money, nobody ever makes it. It's, it's the most god-awful horrible job you could ever have so it just it all depends on your intentions like what what, what are you in it for but yeah no he's talking about this specific yeah 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 <laughs> so we i've got lots of stories like that i've been working for almost a decade in treatment she's just one of them but yeah she she comes she get, she comes in she's high as a kite like you can tell she's been smoking meth i'm thinking for years right like like i'm getting this chick for years and she's fuck me, fuck me. She's like, well, who's gonna fuck me here? And she's running around and she's like, if I'm not gonna get any dick, she's like throwing tantrum, if I'm not gonna get any dick, then you can, I'm not fucking staying here. And so, that's not, that's well, so you know, and you just have to keep talking to them like, no, I can't give you any dick. But, you know, <laughs> like, but obviously a lot more therapeutically, but you're like, you're like, no, then no, come on, you're here Respect for a reason. Yeah. We, wanna, we wanna make things better for you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> none of these little bitches are gonna give me some dick and so i'm like i'm like no none of these little bitches are gonna give you some dick let's get this going let's get come on let's like let's get this process going and so finally she's like fuck this and she walks out the gate goes across the street sits down on the curb and just starts fingering <laughs> <laughs> i'll do it myself stop, stop. Stop. <laughs> what part of town <laughs> South Central. Oh, jeez. A white Half girl. Half naked a, a, white a, girl. A white girl in, in a tough neighborhood. Yeah, what oh, part of South Central? Uh, 33rd and Central. <laughs> yeah, right off the 10. Like, you're, I mean, San Pedro's right there. You in the mix. Like, you're, bro, I, yeah, in the mix. It's, 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 it's not suggested. We had another guy. <laughs> we had another guy. He was, he was great. He He takes off his shirt. He had been to prison, and he's got swastikas on his chest. And he leaves because, uh, you know, he's angry about something. And that sounds he like such a bad idea. <laughs> he leaves. He d Well, uh, he wasn't from this state. But, I mean, like, you, a lot of people have seen Boys in the Hood. And, like, I mean, it's, it's like that's where you are. That's, you're in those movies. And it's not, of course, those movies aren't an exact depiction of it. And things have gotten different, you know. But he goes... <laughs> He leaves and he's walking around the block because he doesn't know where he is and he just keeps circling the block. And finally, somebody talks him into coming back in and we have this long, deep talk about trying to get him to stay and save his life and stuff like that. And I was like, bro, seriously, I'm trying to tell you like, outside of all the other stuff, right? You, you, know, you know, a lot of people will go to treatment so many times, they've heard it all, they've oh, seen yeah. it all, they're also just like, they're like, I know you want me to stay and you're gonna tell me it's for my life. And like, you know, they've heard thousands of different people say thousands of different things. Sadly, people will really go that many times. That's common. But this guy, said, <clears throat> I was like, dude, promise me you're not gonna go out there 
again, like, let's get this figured out right. And he's like, oh, no, no, don't worry. <laughs> On one of my laps, there was a young African-American gentleman that let me know real quick <laughs> that if I'm lost, I better find my way home. <laughs> Because I'm not welcome here at night. <laughs> and well, he had was, that coming. He had that that coming. was the nicest thing somebody could have done for him, yeah, bro. Yeah, no, no. I think I'm honest to God. I believe this guy. Because there was, I think, a murder right on that corner like the week before or something. I honestly think that guy was like trying to help him. Trying to help him. Yeah. yeah like yeah. he's like, I'm from around here and you're not going to make Walking it far. Swastika, you're obviously yeah. not. Yeah, you're obviously not from around here, bro. Yeah. Or for this, this like, you know, world. Yeah, like, yeah. What in the fuck is wrong with you? Like, people have grandparents that were like, or my dad's dad fought against Nazis. Who would fucking be born here and get a swastika tattooed on him? Well, that's just a culture of jail and prison, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, but at the same time, like, like that's that's a stretch, right? I wouldn't. Well, I, okay. I'm just conceding to this. Don't run around. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least get them done. When you're done with that, I guess when you get Put out, a of shirt that on. Shit fixed. Please, public announcement. Yes. Do not walk around South Central with swastikas on your shit. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's I wouldn't just, advise it. No. Is, is it is it easier for you guys like getting clean together or get, you know at a similar? Well, I, it was definitely easier for me to get clean because he was already there. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I was clean when he needed help. You know what I mean? So I had had a couple of years, and then yep. I dragged his ass into treatment. I remember he's like, as long as I don't have to do any of that AA cult bullshit. And then he ended up becoming like, you know, oh, like going yeah. in AA and really doing well in that, that program. You did really well in that I program. I did say that. Yeah. As long as they don't make me do any of that AA, AA cult, cult bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> And then he just like totally twisted that around once I you got went, off the drugs. Well, at one point when my sister cried, I went to an AA meeting. I asked someone that was like, oh, there's a young people's meeting at the, at Hill Street, right? So this is <clears throat> eight years or nine, eight, seven or eight years before I actually give it a real attempt, like through a program and following any instruction. Like I said, I went to Hawaii to get off dope on my own, but this was after that. But I went to the young people's meeting and there's this guy and there's people skating outside and it was very clicky and everybody knew each other and was hugging each other. And I'm super anxious and I've gone like 24 hours without a drink. I didn't have DTs or anything like that, but my anxiety was through the roof. I don't know any of these people. And the guy up there is talking about sucking dick for crack and I was like, I think this isn't for me because at that time, nothing had gotten too weird. <laughs> no cocaine, though. No cocaine gets you sucking some dick. You know yeah. <laughs> Yo, what did we used to call it? It's, it goes? it's, it's, it's not gay if you're it's on a, meth. Yeah, it's not gay. It's, not, meth. it's not gay if you're on meth. We called it that. We didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not like we yeah, are yeah, yeah. It's I, not, I, I don't believe that. Like, I believe that if you are on meth and you do... Um, if you, you do homosexual acts, I don't think, I think the meth brought it out of you, you know, because I think people are born with those tendencies. I don't, I like, I have never hit the pipe and been like, man, sucking some dick would be great right now. Or letting some man suck my dick. I've been in positions where that was the thing. Like dudes were like, yo, or an old man in Hawaii was like, yo, here's the deal. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm cool with that, bro. You know what I mean? I'll be, I'll be sick. They, they call it queer juice in, in prison. Yeah, yeah. And on the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Sorry. No, no, no. Oh, what was <laughs> I thinking of? Hey, remember the time at that uh, McLaughlin apartment when um, you were so you were all drunk and those kids in the alley like came at you sideways and they poured on a Venice Boulevard and you shot at them and Aunt Kim, dude, we had this <laughs> nice lady named Kim that lived downstairs from us. She went out there and picked up all the shells and then like put him back inside and flushed the shells on the toilet and like yeah. told the cops, yeah, some dude ran by, you know, some dude was shooting at these kids and ran by. Like she I, covered the whole fucking thing up. She was so dope. I was coming from. Oh, shit face. But I was coming from somewhere and there was these guys like blocking the alleys and some like essays. And I was like honking, oh, get the fuck out of the way. And they like gang You were on wasted me. though, bro. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasted. And they were like gang oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. on me. And I, I'm like, and so I just drove at them and they dive out in front of the car. My, this alley was a dead end alley. Yeah. And so they watched me park. You know, as I, I just I tried to run them down with my truck. I pull into a spot that's in vision of them. 
and I go up and I'm, I don't know, I must have been out of my fucking Did you mind. have it on you or did you have to go upstairs and get I it? I had it on me. I go in the house, I take my gun and throw it on the couch and go outside to have a cigarette. And they come rounding the of, sidewalk. Yeah. On a Venice Boulevard. And one of them pulls a gun on me. Man. Pulls a gun. And I was just like, you're not going to shoot. And I, that's all I got out. Boom, 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 boom. And so I hit the ground. I'm pretty sure you shot at him first, bro. I go I'm pretty sure you shot retrieve him first. my weapon. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> my and bad. I just fucking reach. Uh, it was like there's a the walkway. It thing. was all in self-defense. There was like a walkway, like wall thing. And I just like, it wasn't like an action movie or anything like that. I just like put it over the edge and just started like just shooting. Just in case there were, you know, anything. And so everybody disperses. But yeah, there was this sweet, awesome woman that Named was. Kim, yeah. She had I'll never forget through. her, bro. She like, bro, she, she was like a crack addict through. in the 80s and shit. And she was clean. Got her life together. Yeah, she was cool. She was raising her kids in there and shit. She her grandbaby out, too. She was digging slugs out of the ground she was she with was, it bro. she took all the brass put it she in was her shirt it. flush it down the toilet she's like go go to the bar go get lost you know we'll tell the cops it was a shooting out here she was totally she cool. was on it and i did i went down to the bar and i got drunk till they kicked me out and i came home and nothing came of it cocaine's a hell of a drug yeah, yeah. So, yeah that was so i mean booze. that was cocaine drinking like yeah my, th drinking was was really dangerous because as much as it helped with my panic disorder. It also, you know, you've got no inhibitions, especially if it's just, you just go for it, you know? I, I remember one time I was shit-faced. You were the one that was like, you stopped me, I'm pretty sure. You're freshly back. I got oh, is a sniper <laughs> rifle out on the that same and banister. We had a terrace. It was like a terrace that like got us on yeah. the in our and apartment. I got that on the second same floor. banister, and I'm looking down the scope. I just shit face. I, I don't even think I was taking any drugs. I was just drunk, and I'm what? And I'm looking, and this scope was great. It was like a 32 or something like that. It had a really far distance, and I'm looking. Our we're on a major boulevards. And there's side streets that go down. I'm looking down those side streets at pedestrians and putting the crosshairs on them. And I'm like, boom, boom. And I wasn't sociopathic. I wasn't actually, I didn't even have a round chamber. This is probably after you broke up with somebody. But or like, you're probably yeah, in a just, bad place mentally, you know? Like, yeah, that was just, a, like, you rarely got like I that. But, but you were weird with firearms. Yeah, but you you came out and you were like, "What the fuck are there was you times that like you? there was times we had to ask him not to bring a gun, like don't bring a gun, yeah. like when me and Kalangi the cat, me and Kalangi the cat were nice. together at his apartment and we're like, Bri, please don't bring a gun, Kalangi's like, don't I don't want to be around a gun right now, and <laughs> you want me to tell the whole story? Can Go I? For can it. I? Fuck yeah. it. Okay, so he he's like, I promise. And he's wasted. He's like, I promise I won't bring a gun. I love you guys. I respect you guys. I know what you've been through. <laughs> promise goes in his bedroom puts a 45 in his waist and comes back outside if we don't see it we think he, we believe him and we're going down the stairs and he's wearing dicky shorts and they're all baggy and the fucking gun no joke it's like the three of us and we're like flanking down the stairs and the gun no joke falls through his fucking <laughs> shorts dude and is tumbling end over end down the stairs and me and calling it like against the walls like oh my fucking god you piece you son of a bitch dude and then calling is like i'm not going out with you guys <laughs> he's like, i'm not going out with you guys tonight he did but um he did though he did you put it away we made like i walked a minute like you're putting the gun in the safe you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but no, that yeah that I was just, scary yeah, as fuck. I, I he was like fumbling after it he was like trying to be, and it's like tumbling and like and he's on it like Bro, I was so scared that fucking gun was going to go off. Yeah. That got, happens to people. You know, like with, uh, I'm, I wasn't, you know, we got in a lot of scraps, but I'm not classically trained or anything like that. Yeah. And I don't know a lot of people's experience. My experience with fighting is you lose some and you win some. Like, like sometimes it was a domination and sometimes I would get my head beat in. So... That was the great equalizer, you know what I mean? Like, what, what do they say about Samuel Colt? God made men and Samuel Colt, Colt made, made them equal. equal. Yeah, he did. That's what it was. You know, you could flash a piece or just take it out. I mean, they got the brandishing laws because of that. Yeah. But, like, 
at that time. Well, you time, shot at people. Yeah. You shot yeah. at people. I mean, if if you're getting drunk and getting Yeah, but high, you're not like that now. You know what I mean? Like, there's people that stay stuck in that kind of shit, bro. No, no. Now I have a completely different look on firearms. I, I respect them. I love them. And I also believe that gun safety is, like, so important and essential. And I think it should be taught to everybody, you know, because it's a, it's a right. And so everybody should know about it. But, like, back then, it was just, like, that it... I mean, even getting drunk and loaded couldn't fully, I never felt fully safe or secure at any time in my life. There was never a time that I felt safe or secure. Can I ask you something? Hmm. What's the worst thing? What is like the worst part of having it? What is the worst thing to deal with while working in treatment? What's the like, the, the what are the downsides? Like, because a lot of people don't even realize how big that industry is, how like gnarly it is, how people stay stuck in it, like all that weird shit. You know, like people live in treatment for years and then people that need it can't get it because of like the way that the system has worked. Well, the way that the system works is this. So you have, you have your options. You have, there has private insurance, right? <clears throat> in that case, you're gonna go to a place they're gonna beg you to stay and they're gonna beg you and they're gonna want you to stay and they're gonna want you to do, you know, they're gonna want you to go do the process and and everything like that. And in that world, the private insurance companies actually run that world. So it's like if you're going to one of those places, they dictate the terms, right? They want specific, like um, treatment. When I went to treatment, it was popular that it was a 90-day program. And it was very popular that it was abstinence-based. When right? you say popular, you mean that's easiest to get paid for it? That you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would get sure reimbursed for ninety days and um, and and uh, abstinence based, right? So, and now it's turned to as short as possible and get them on as much medication as possible, and then people like you, you're you are subject to what the insurance companies require to pay out, and you're still ending up in this constant battle of fighting with all your might and all your documentation and everything you can do to get that insurance company to, to pay. pay. Yeah, Fuck yeah. It's so, so you, hard. You, it's, it's, so they dictate the terms of treatment. So, so it keeps changing. Yeah, so if a doctor comes, you know, a doctor is making a thousand bucks a visit or 500 bucks a visit, depending on like where you are or whatever, like that, I mean, what they believe in and what they got to do to make that insurance pay might be different. And that's how it goes if you're working in treatment and people talk about the, a substance abuse epidemic and, you, and it's the same systemic problem in su substance abuse as anything else. Anything else that's nuanced in human um, politics, religion, it doesn't matter. Like the negative side is the, you know, is that you are subject to the payer, right? Like, like that's, that's it. And then you got your Medi-Cal stuff, right? There's a 300 person waiting list. Ain't nobody kissing anybody's ass. You come in there and act a fool. They'll be like, get the, they'll physically throw your ass out because they got your you have very little value. Your, your value is there's 200 people waiting in line to take your place. And it becomes very hard at any level, especially now that I've gotten into this level where it's macroscopic and I have to oversee all the pieces moving and make sure that they work in perfect concert to give the best possible treatment for the person while still maintaining a profit margin. But you can see it doesn't matter if you stick with it long enough. You have to work very hard for human life to not be devalued. It has to be very, you see thousands of people. I've, I have met and worked with personally so many people that have overdosed and died. I was going to say, how many? Like, if you were to throw a, I uh, like stopped, a ballpark number, bro. I stopped counting at 83. That was back in 2017. What, what percentage of the people that are in treatment 
actually get clean. Now that fentanyl's here too, bro. Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing too. Is so there's multiple sides to like substance abuse in my opinion. I mean, this is just from experience. That's that's all I have to go off of, but I've seen thousands teacher. and thousands of people. You've got people for psychological reasons, you got people for physiological reasons, you got people for sociological or existential reasons, right? So either they're uh, real lucky and they become physically addicted to that to that substance. And if you can comfortably make them not physically addicted to it, they're okay. That's the luckiest class. There's psychological where the, now you've got this person and that's where you get into like, that's what you were talking about earlier. I found out, I come to find out that I was anadonic. That's what had happened to me. Like they found me, there was flies on my face. I wasn't showering. Was bad, I didn't I didn't care. I was anadonic. So you have to have a certain amount of dopamine just to put on your shoes in the morning. It's the reward center that like tells you to put one foot in, forward in front of the other. If you get lots of that dopamine, it's telling you this is really good. This is really, really yeah. good. You need more of this. So that would be like sugars and stuff. You know, like anthropologically speaking, like way back in the day, if somebody tasted something that was rich in sugar, that was rare, it would give them a dopamine rush. Sex, obviously, to, to continue the procreation of the earth, you know. But then you've got these substances that dump all of it at once. It is, and that's why people say. Or close to, the yeah. Great, right, no, you can't, becoming anadon, like people will throw around the word anadonia, like to, to, the complete depletion of, of dopamine, like it's some sort of like common occurrence. No, it's, it's not. It's not. Your, bo your brain can produce, so, we're meant, that's, we're literally physically, physiologically made to make as much dopamine as we need. 100%. But I was, when I went to Hawaii, I get on methadone. And my personal opinion on methadone is that's a federally subsidized substance. I think it's a great program, but it has nothing to do with helping, it, helping the person is a byproduct. I think it was a crime reduction idea by the federal government. Yeah. Like if we can, you know, it's it's kind of like in, like I think Great Britain was doing it for a while, but they had like Hitler legal. invented methadone, right? Or is it made by the Nazis meth. to like come off of like- Meth for like sure. Denny's. Meth for sure. I'm not sure about because methadone, when they would yeah I, because when they would like blitzkrieg they're all hyped up on drugs so then they have to have a drug to bring them down so they can sleep you know so I, I was told that I like to believe that because that's an evil fucking substance yeah <clears throat> but I mean yeah I mean if it's a difference between someone crawling through your window and taking your fucking TV or not yeah. sure it's a great thing it's a great yeah. thing but I was on a super. Yeah, over high the dose. Top, over I was the top. buying people's take homes and I really was staying away from everything else. Like I really did get on methadone to stop everything, but methadone <clears throat> has an opioid effect. That's oh, the serious point. fucking yeah. opioid effect. And so every and time I'm in the system forever. Yeah, opi yeah, methadone is the only drug that I've ever heard of that actually gets into your bone marrow. So that means the new blood that your body makes actually makes it with methadone in it because methadone has some stupid half-life of like 14 days or something. I, when I went to treatment, I was sober for four days before I started feeling detox symptoms and I felt detox symptoms for 45 days. Jesus Christ. So you remember you were doing like a, you had to like do your like counseling sessions in the jacuzzi because you were yeah. wiggling so bad. He had like, he was like, he was like, and then you had that seizure. I was going to beat up the nurse because this was at the treatment center I worked at that I met Jack. Yeah. He got me that into I it. met Jack. You know what I mean? And so I got him in there, same treatment center. And um, we like, um, I was going to say his name, fucking the rehab mogul. The guy was so bad. But so what happened was, is my brother has a fucking, he's out there hugging a tree. No joke. He's hugging a tree because he's like, as long as I'm well, why were you hugging the tree? I felt like it was going to like ground me because I was shaking so bad. And yeah, I, he was having like borderline seizures, I, bro. Like going in, like it was bad. He was I did like, have one grand mall seizure. Yeah, and he hit his head on the fucking stucco. And I'm like, so I look into his med file and I'm like, 
my brother's getting 30 milligrams of phenobarbital and this like 110 pound chick that says she slams a gram of heroin a day of black tar and does a little meth is getting like 90. And my brother just had a fucking seizure and hit his head on a stucco. Dude, I was like, remember they had to remove, they removed me from the site yeah. because I was like, bugging out bro i was gonna go fucking nuts the nurse i was like calling his blowing his phone up threatening his life and shit i was like my, yeah and the doctor was, was like i mean that, that doctor ended up being like a key uh like witness in the michael jackson yeah like yeah a, um what do they call Can we say waldman waldman mm. dr waldman no what what do they call the those um maybe i can't call oh him my out. god no no a, a, a um what is it called when <clears throat> you bring somebody just because they're an expert in the subject yeah, into an expert, a court? And it's uh, an expert, expert witness. witness. Yeah, 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 thank you. So he like he was an expert the witness that yeah. in the Michael Jackson. So like, but at that time in 2014, like he told me straight up, like, I don't know, man. Like you get off methadone by weaning off a of methadone. I don't know. You're going from 220 milligrams to nothing. I don't know what's gonna happen. Nobody knows what's gonna happen. I'm gonna throw some stuff at you and we'll see if it sticks. But my guess is, is buckle up, this is gonna suck. And that's literally how he laid it out for me. I was like enraged. Cause I was like, oh my God. And and that was, that was, I don't know. The, I, I had done very well working with my hands, doing plumbing and construction and stuff, but I was so drawn. And I think about it now, and I think about that, like, I can't complain about working in treatment because I definitely chose it because being in treatment, I met the weirdest Fuck. people. There was this kid that was the first, <clears throat> second, first, uh, first or second night I'm there. Like a bunch of adult children. He comes in, he like sits down on the couch. He's he's sitting there and he's like, oh yeah. Oh, mm, yeah. oh hey, noodle grooving, oh, noodle yeah. grooving. Oh, yeah, okay. Noodle grooving where they're like and still then, sober, <clears throat> but still like fuck the mess got him. Yeah, like, oh yeah, it's just all. <laughs> and I'm like, and the, there's like this, songbird with, there's like this and cholo. Shit. I remember that dude. <laughs> there was this cholo that was the, the night like guy and the, that was the shift that was working. And I he falls asleep. And I'm still bugging. And I look over and I'm like, oh, that guy spilled a little water on his pants or something. And then I look back over and it's growing. And he's just pissing. Was he all happy? Over. He was just he smiling? He's just sitting up. Was he, <laughs> he was happy. See? Just when people be this big. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, man. He just, and I'm like, and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, ah, oh, pee, pee, pee. Because I didn't know what to like do. Like, hey, my brother used to fuck people up, dude. When they would pee test him, if he didn't like you, he would do it while taking a shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, he would he'd be like, he'd be looking him in the eyes, taking a shit. And you have to, in the you cup, have to UA people. That was so, so funny. Like when they would UA, like <laughs> I would do all sorts of stuff. Bro. Like I would do what I called the Winnie the Pooh. So I'd just put my, <laughs> my ankles and put my shirt under my chin. Then we need to go UA for them. Yeah. Or, um, yeah, there was a couple of times where we would do I, that I, in it the wasn't because I didn't dislike them. I guess I was just like, I was like a really good I really wanted what yeah. they were selling because they always bragged about you being such a good client. Yeah, because I I gotten to the point where you have like, flies on you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you like, have like, flies on you. Dead sounded awesome. Yeah, I just couldn't pull the trigger. That was bad, bro. Was like bad. I didn't have the courage, or that not courage. That's that's a terrible. But what what was your darkest point? That point for sure. Right? Is that is that your darkest point? I mean, there was another time he didn't care about in Hawaii. Where he was on benzos too. He was on benzos and methadone. Like he wasn't eating. He was literally wasting. Yeah. He smelled bad. He was wasting. My dad is not the type of dude to ask for help for shit, for shit. He's just not that guy. And yeah. he came to me, came to me, didn't call me. He, well, he called me and said, come to the house and said, you need to go to your little brother Patrick's house and get your brother Kenny and put him in treatment because I'm not going to watch my son die. He said, go now. Go get my kid. And he said it like that, go get my kid. Go get my son. Like, don't let my son die. At that point. It, and we went over, <clears> me and my buddy Max went over there and grabbed him. And yeah. he, he agreed. He agreed. He was like, all right, dude. All right, for sure. And I'm like, bro, this is bad. You're bad, you know? I mean, at that point, it's like, why not? <clears throat> Actually, like, you I got him a carton of smokes. I mean, like, and, like, it was like, <clears throat> it was cool. And the place was really nice. It was, like, at the top of, what, Mulholland and 
Delito? Laurel Canyon. Laurel Canyon. It was so nice, dude. No, 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 no. You're talking about the hills. That's where you worked. I'm talking about in oh Malibu. My God, I'm it was like off Lur- uh, Las Virginis and Mount Ensenal in like Mohon. Canyon. I'm sorry, Ensenal. Yeah, it was beautiful, man. Yeah, it was a beautiful. Had house. a water slide and shit. It was a cool place. But I he mean, was a crooked motherfucker. That's oh how got yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. That was my introduction. So I got I got my first internship after 90 days sober into that program, and that guy ends up getting like I don't know 157 years for insurance fraud and sex. See what he was doing was he was paying the policies that he was billing. You know what I mean? He would act like he had he some doing scholarship all foundation. Sorts of stuff. He was billing yeah. for dead people. He was doing. Oh, all he was bad, stuff. bro. He I mean, was, he was. I mean, when I heard about the sex stuff, I was out. You know, I went yeah. and I branched out. And I well, that's when he up. went from Adderall to meth. Dude, this yeah. dude used to hold the microphone over his fucking head like this and talk to it. Oh, like, oh. Fucking, uh, it's a systemic problem. Oh, so, you know, uh, the families are the problem. You know, you're, it's your dad. And he would look you down. Know? And he would be like, so up. high on Adderall, I dude. Did, I thought he was on the spectrum. And he had danger of every day, bro. His shoulders were covered in danger. He was such a weird dude. From he wears lo- penny loafers with the pennies and no socks. <laughs> yeah. And then he had like, and then a black that? shirt. I was always like, why don't you wear a white shirt? Yeah. Like he's covered. He's covered in danger. Head to toe and, and he's like a ginger. Always half bald. He was almost he was completely bald. Student, I don't know where the dandruff was coming from. This is a guy that owned the treatment center that we we're talking yeah. about that Jack said was run by guy, somebody with um, like less than good intentions. Mm-hmm. I, I, at first though, at first. It seemed like he was trying to like help people by robbing these fucking insurance companies, and everybody was down for that. Everybody, and that's because the insurance company's been robbing everybody in this country for how long? You know what I mean? It's like to our turn. We come from the '90s, right? So the '90s. Remember the guy on the news that blows his head off with like the the HMO. HMO You remember that on the 10 freeway in front of his dog? That poor dog. Uh, Yeah, Edna gets sued in 1999. Like they're all doing these dirty things, and so we're I'm. you know, an adolescent coming hearing about these, these are the relative cultural stories that I'm hearing is that insurance companies are paying doctors to not run tests for certain diseases to make sure they don't have to pay out and stuff. And that really is. I mean, but we were, you know what, bro? We were so fucking poor because of this shit. You know why? Because my dad, no matter what, we had medical insurance that he paid for out of his pocket, Kaiser. So like a third of his fucking income went to this shit. To, so seven kids could go to the hospital if they need to. And he was the last motherfucker to take you to the hospital. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm going to walk it off, you know, rub some dirt on that type shit. But I said, my head's bleeding. You're fine, you're fine. Like, yeah. butterfly stitches, you know? And paid a third of his fucking income, basically, to keep make sure that if something happened to us, we'd be okay in America. <clears throat> seven kids, like, doing it by himself as a painter, painting houses. This dude was like... It's just fucking, it's not easy to, the medical system is set up to where, we're like, that shit's fucked, bro. We should, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad he robbed them fools. Fuck it. How, yeah, how, how, the how, sexual how, shit's wild. How many I'm rehabs are are, are Legit. genuinely trying to help people? Wow, that's all. <laughs> Either one, I, the, the no hope recovery is, for sure. Yeah, I mean. 100%. It's hard because the thing is, is that, 90% of them believe they are. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. with anything, you you make concessions, right? So when you're running a treatment center, you've got the, the clientele, right? You've got the reason you got into the business, right? To help the addicts. Then you've got all the staff on the payroll and their families rely on this job to eat and live. And so, you know, like people make small concessions and there's people in it for the money though dog that are just yeah no 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 of course it's also just straight straight up like criminals so like yeah criminals yeah yeah yeah. there is i mean yeah so many you're also talking about like during the so obama passes the the legislation the healthcare reform act right and it pushes insurance companies to cover Mm -hmm. things right Yeah, because pre-existing conditions so mental health is now covered yeah so you can't not cover somebody for being a A drug addict. Yeah, exactly. And at that time, everything's on the open market, even policies that pay very, very well. So yeah, there's, there was lots of, I believe, um, is it now now? it's a lot better. No, wait, what? Yeah. Bro, what open policy pays for treatment? No, what open market policy pays for treatment? No, 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 I'm talking about the, the treatment centers. Oh, actually yeah. keeping their yeah. nose clean because they have to. there's no value in it. 
The, the insurance companies have, so it's almost like, I look at it like Star Wars. It's like, they got dick down super raw. <laughs> Like in in the in the nineties in the two, in the two thousands really 2000s, it was yeah. like it was like two thousand and eight to like yeah, yeah. sixteen you know they're charging five grand these guys way. are getting ripped they're, you know they're, like Aetna and shit they're Blue opening Blue their Cross own machine. labs they're they're like well why, why am I paying this lab and they're charging them two grand I'll just open my own lab I mean these places are making millions and millions and millions of dollars and then there comes a time. And I call it the Empire Strikes Back. And the insurance <laughs> companies just fucking go no, no more. Yeah, they're over it. They're no over more. it right now, dude. FBI they're task force it. comes out, um, you know, making sure for all this types of fraudulent yeah, billing. Yeah, right. They're going to so, make sure nobody gets treatment, right? Like, of course. Like, the feds are on that. Is they're going to make up? sure nobody gets better, right? Is it getting cleaned up? Yeah, But it has to be because but, the insurance companies won't pay. But now yeah. the insurance companies... Went from like, Having no man, power we were paying two hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this guy to go to a treatment for you know sixty ninety days. This is crazy. To like, those same insurances now pay five hundred dollars a day or something. So now it's like, honestly, I don't like if there's like the luxury places. There's there's a niche, right? Yeah, yeah. They take cash. And somebody's there knows people. That's that's the only way to run a luxury. You got an in with the entertainment industry. You got an in yeah. with the music industry. You got an in with some sort of high paying industry that has incredible, uh, not well. They don't need money, just money, right? I I personally think, and I guess I I I've, it would take too long to explain why I believe this. I personally believe that uh, private out of network. Um, treatment will everybody's talking about how we need more treatment i think it'll be cut by 80 percent in the next oh, 20 for years. sure for sure you're gonna have you're gonna have, it'll be public or not at all you're gonna have a hundred thousand dollars for 90 days just give it to me up front yeah. you're gonna have medical yeah and then you're gonna have Fucked. places that like just keep you got to keep it real real inexpensive and think about how like he's saying that in the next 20 years and what are we in the middle of right now yeah. People dying on drugs epidemic. And the insurance companies are doing everything. There's not an open market policy that can get you private fucking treatment. So not, that means you could not go right now, with, no matter how much money you fucking got. If you went if you went and got the best policy that's available to you right now, I'd, I'd give you a list of like two places. Yeah. And that's only- It has to be through your work decade. or your parents. That's because I've got a decade of experience. And so I could give you maybe two places that are privately so shame, owned. Dude. I mean, I remember people calling me and uh, there was a short time where I was doing the admissions process of it. You were it. good at that. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Really good and that's that. why you have to love what you do because if people are like, you're in it for the money, it's like, no, no. I could make so much more money doing that. If you can talk somebody into going to one place instead of 45,000 other places, you can talk them into anything. What, what, could, what do you think the solution is to this whole drug problem that we have in the country? Well, you, you, it's probably the world. Take the phones away. I mean, <laughs> yeah. People have to like be around each other and shit. Yeah, yeah. Me personally, um, I mean, it, I, it seems like the drugs are coming from Mexico and China. Yeah. And if you'd ask Mexico, this is a culture problem. If you ask Mexico and China, would they love to see the United States just buckle and fall? Oh fuck yeah! And we're already eating they ourselves up from the that. inside. Yeah. yeah, fentanyl's killed more people than the war. I guarantee it, bro. Yeah, and then that's and and so that's what I was saying that it takes all, like most people have all those factors going. They got a biological, a physiological, a sociological, and an existential mm -hmm. attachment to a substance and sociological for sure. You know, how many people have you heard that goes and gets college degrees, puts themselves into debt, and they can barely get an entry level position right. at some sort of company. You've got that being one thing. Me personally, I I have boycotted, not boycotted, I'm not like standing and going in circles with a fucking sign, but I've made a personal decision not to interact with social media. And that's directly a response of what I've seen because from when I first get sober to what I see the people today, you're not just detoxing them off of drugs and alcohol, you're detoxing them off of their phone. Like these days, like you're, the phone is always, like it's, it's 
one out of every group, it's always, and I'm going at the lowest level. It is a drag out, balls out fight to get their phone. Obviously you can't, some places do. I've worked for a place where it's like, just watch them real closely and they get it for four hours a day after the first three days. That's more of a luxury setting. You know, I've got my girls, they pop out. I've worked at many places where I wear tailored suits and I ran multi-million dollar, um, you know, places okay. that have heated pools and queen size beds that place was and five tight. star. Um, I went there, he got me in there. <laughs> no, I mean, that place was tight. You get five star meals and stuff like that. They bankrupt. catered every day, every meal. Most of the places I've worked went bankrupt. They just went bankrupt. They expected last year's return from the insurance company, yeah. but insurance companies- Will hold that. out too, don't they? <laughs> they and they'll, yo, and they'll like, audit you. Yeah. This is what they'll do. All right, somebody's doing cost analysis at, at the insurance companies and they're saying, okay, these people have now pulled X amount from us and they're continuing to pull this much amount. We gotta plug this hole, bro. Audit them. An audit can take up to a year. That means everything they owe from that moment until the audit is over, over they don't have to pay it. And so you, what'll happen, you get hit with one or two of those It'll shut you down. That's it. I mean, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of inpatient places, from what I've seen, are barely hanging on. Yeah. And so. And they're fighting. <laughs> like, like the thing is, is like, and the insurance companies switch it up on you, right? So that you have to like, it's almost like in order to catch up, you nearly have to do something illegal to just keep your doors open. Because the insurance companies will change the rules. You know. So how? And do when you asked me like how many good places versus yeah. bad places, it's hard because there's so many people that have all the good intentions in the world, but they start making little concessions to keep the jobs for their people. Yep. You know what I mean? And oh, keep I people clean people and people are in there doing me. good. These people are doing really well, you know, uh, you know, I'm gonna break a regulation here or there. And then sometimes, like anything, I mean, I think it's a human condition. You can incrementally talk yourself pretty damn far. Just like I incrementally went from successful and happy to flies on my face. Like that, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I, 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 a lot of people fall from very far and it's, and it goes both ways. It's kind of like a mirror of itself, right? So you've got the substance abuser that incrementally will allow themselves to become less and less human, right? Their, their brain is going to, especially when it comes to dopamine and all the ways that the human brain works, is going to slowly talk. It has to justify what you're doing, right? You don't just go from millionaire to bum, you know, that's never an overnight you know, um, condition, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's, that's, that happens incrementally and the, and the mind justifies it. And it's the same thing for people that end up running. And I'm not justifying any place. I personally won't attach myself to a place that's not kosher, right? <clears throat> but, um, but I understand when s some of these people and they truly care but they, they've put everything they've got on the line. Now, we're not talking about the early 2000 stuff. That was like, dude, the, <laughs> you got a guy that's sober for 30 days and Working, his dad's right? willing yeah. to bankroll it for 30 grand and he's making 30 million a year. You know, when they turned that tap off, those guys went quick, you know? But I can see how somebody goes from, you know, I worked for a place, it was 20, 21 beds, almost $25,000 in, in advertising. Most of that just to be relevant on Google. $25,000 a month. You've already got, you know, $10,000 lease or, or house payment or whatever. You've already got $10,000 worth of DWP or more and gas bill company food. You've got quadruple or five times that payroll, you've already got all this incurred cost, right? So just like the attic incrementally t will justify themselves falling lower and lower, a person 
that got in it for the right reasons can incrementally talk themselves into waking up one day. They woke up one day and they were on the street. Well, this guy woke up one day and he's a triple felon. It's a, it's like a mirror image of itself. So I, I see how it happens. And especially when you're in it and you're seeing how dirty the insurance companies play, everybody around you starts thinking like, yeah, fuck them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bet. Bet. But, Automatic. But there's FBI task force that are not playing the games. Them and, up. and then you're, you're under licensing under the state that you're in. And then when people say there's no good treatment centers in their states, it's because California, why is it, we're like the second densest treatment populated state. area, our state area in the world. Well, it's because of how it's regulated. DHCS, the Department of Healthcare Services, doesn't play around. If they find any problems, issues, things, they go, they talk to the clients, they go through all your paperwork. They find you're acting up and they will close you down. It's not like they're easy on it. It's just easy to, in comparison to a place that requires a judge to sign for you to open a treatment center in that state. So... A lot of people flood to California or Florida because it's it's uh, it's easier in comparison to their state. Hey. Or, <clears throat> you know, like, you've only got so many people in Arizona. <clears throat> it's an epidemic, right? But, again, you're, you're compartmentalized. You've got your, your rich luxury places. That's a niche. You've got your private out-of-network places. That's a niche. You've got your in-network places. That's a niche. And then you've got your... Um, Medi-Cal, like Medicaid, subsidized, or subsidized, subsidized yeah. places, right? That's a niche. And then you've got this other one. Like Don't even get me started shit. on nonprofits. A nonprofit, you can look, it's like public record. Nonprofits can be like, okay, so the Los Angeles gave us, you know, $10 million this year. Uh, Los Angeles City gave us 10. Los Angeles County gave us eight. The state of California gave us eight. Uh, and the federal government gave us another 10. And uh, we spent $8 million and we lost 28. I know the math didn't make sense on that because I wasn't keeping track. But they'll just like say, we lost it. I don't know. So, all right. Here we go. So, like, I don't know. And it's public. Like the Pentagon. <laughs> so, it's kind of like the answer is as difficult as, you know, like, how do you solve the homeless problem? Yeah, that's. It's a nuanced. It's a very nuanced very complicated. issue. Yeah, because hold on, who can, does? Can you, before you go down, what? What is the? Okay, I'm going to prompt you on this. The shadiest thing you've ever seen somebody do to get another person in treatment that really fucked with an, a full culture. So what I'm saying is, you remember when them body brokers were getting people in based off of their bloodlines? Oh, Bro. that was its own house. So. Body broker, ever seen like Body Broker came out the movie and stuff, and it became well. I came oh, through. I was working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called oh, Body Broker. Oh okay. shit! And so that really kind of like sh 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 put a spotlight on it. Obviously, if they're coming out with movies, like it's not as easy to do. You to know hide, what I mean? Yeah. Because when the Federal Bureau of Investigation wants you, they'll get you. You can get warrants for taps and all that, you know. But, uh, oh, yeah, so a body <laughs> so broker up. This is, is the most somebody fucked up that shit, incentivizes bro. a patient to go to treatment. So they For say, what? But, but they, they also, like these kinds of the ones that help them get insurance, like they, they basically do an illegal sh some illegal shit. No, no, I'm going to get to that. So, oh, okay. so I'm just going to say the general, what a body That's broker idea, is, yeah. is like the general concept of it is that they incentivize a client to go to treatment. So this person is no longer somebody who stood up and said, I want to go to treatment, They're, they've given them an incentive, whether it's money, drugs, hotel rooms. Promises. Um, promises, a lot of promises. I remember in the late, when you get past 2017, 2018, it's like a drag out battle because now you've got the treatment center not paying the body broker and the body broker not paying the client, or they are paying, but this person's not paying and everybody's talking about it and yelling about it. And like, it, it's a disgusting, disgusting thing. It's human trafficking, really. Yeah. So what he's talking about is I, found, I knew of a guy who his hustle was so filthy. Bro, bro. He couldn't 
pump in enough people Bro, this is by so brokering bad, them. So <laughs> he gets with a lab this that does horrible. Native American blood cards because Native American health insurance. Haven't they had it hard enough? Oh, Damn. yeah. No, 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 no. Wiping them off the planet wasn't enough. So, <clears throat> like, obviously what's left of the Native American like the, uh, the uh, whole, people uh, yeah, have the people, privileges bro. because I mean th they got it they so got dirty for real, so long. Bro, yeah. I, I'm such a fan of American history, North American history between 1700 and 1900, 1900 and 2000. Let's not. I don't want to get off of what they were actually doing. All right, so he gets with and they start cutting fraudulent blood cards so it so said you were in a can, tribe so then then that person joins the tribe then they get tribal insurance <laughs> then it they pays. send them to the treatment pays, right? center and then the treatment center this is right so fucked up. and then the treatment center pays that guy but that guy but what does the pre tribal insurance end up doing in the end Stop sending people to fucking treatment. Yeah, so the tribal insurance, or what they do is like the, you would see the same tribal's insurance that were paying these astronomical amounts. Where I mean, it'll don't get me wrong. A couple of places almost claim a couple of big names. Humana, I think Blue Blue Shield of California has been sued for all sorts of shit. But I, I think the Blue Shield of California Health. Net, I think they were ready to claim bankruptcy. Like with, they, it was bad. It was they Blue were Cross Blue Shield was fucked. They got yeah. fucked up in, so, the, in the late teens. So they 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 pulled out of the open market. So if anybody wants to know, that's not a drug addict. Why you can't go to the open market and get a fabulous PPO policy? <laughs> it's because they raped them. Yeah, the, the the substance abuse industry definitely got them pretty good, okay. and now they're getting everybody back. But the problem is, is that that affects everybody. But like, yeah, what he was talking about, that guy, when I met him, uh, it was like back in the day when we were like, you know, um, I was such a polarized person because I like I, I would own businesses in one hand and then, you know, go out with a gun that as the same person. It was weird. But like. There was I still a couple, love there you, was bro. some <laughs> There you. was some times where him and I were around true sociopathic that killers. Crazy people. And you man. can when when you're in their presence you feel it. There's something happens. I there is something Always something bad happens too, dude. That's why I believe in spirituality. There is something about human connection between two people that's non-quantifiable at this time. There is something about it. You talked about it when you talked about authenticity. There's something that you feel when you're with yeah. something. And when you're with the sociopath- You got that, a vibration off the influence that is buggy, bro. It's, you, it's, it's you, not you're, cool. You, you're bot, you're, it's visceral, right? And that was the same thing when I got around this guy and he's just scrolling through his phone like this. Look at, look at all these fucking Etnas and Jake's. <laughs> and he's talking about insured, Clientele. Bro, hey, stop, stop, stop. I love you. I love you, bro. <laughs> I love you, I love you dog. He's crazy. <laughs> but I got that same feeling off of him. I'm like, <laughs> this guy's wrong. Half those people are probably dead today. Yeah. You know? And we laugh so we don't cry, honestly. And that's that's how I've I've dealt with um, most of our life. <laughs> most of our life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but continuing to work in uh, I mean, you I've been threatened. My life's been threatened working in treatment so many times. <laughs> they, people threaten your kids and shit. No, oh, yeah, I'll fuck they, your baby. It just, yeah, yeah. Jesus, I'll kill you. Man, I'll, yeah. I'm gonna follow you home. Yeah, I'll kill your family. I'm gonna fuck up your car. I'm gonna do, you know, because you're in control of their phone. <laughs> well, yeah, that's one. Yeah, thing, but no, yeah, you're, you're, you don't you're, give me my phone back. I'll rape you. So like, Jesus, bro. This person, you're a person. You're coming into this situation. Your only means of coping is taken away. Yeah. And it's being replaced with like, it's kind of like when like, on a smaller level, it's kind of like when it's like, you see somebody that's like 600 pounds and you're just like, Jesus Christ, man. What happened? Like, dude, just get up and walk around the block a couple of times and take and take it easy on how much you eat, you know? But for that It's person, not that easy, but you know, they need forklifts and shit. <laughs> yeah, but for that person, like they can't stop. 
And so if you just took away their food, that's kind of the same way it feels to the addict. It's like, I, I feel like it, it's like food, water, procreation, right? We all have these natural drives to do, uh, do. To, to, to be human beings. And then at a certain point, if you cross that threshold when you're an addict, it gets on the list. And so now it's no longer it's no longer a prefrontal cortex problem. Now it's in your psyche. Now it's like it's like telling yourself, oh, food's not readily available right now. Don't be hungry. Water's not readily available right now. Don't be thirsty. You know, I, you're married. Don't want to fuck that woman. Whatever it may be. Like those are instinct. <laughs> like those are comparable? <laughs> No, no, that because because food, water, procreation, those are okay, in, okay, all instinctual my bad, my bad, my bad, human okay. like instincts. You know what I mean? And when it makes it on there, it's like even when the person doesn't want it, they hate you and them for not having it because it's like something primal, instinctual in you is saying you need that, and yeah. that's why some of the smartest and greatest politicians oh, that nice. could have ever been just never made it because they couldn't hold their shit together long enough because they can manipulate. I mean, they manipulate. If you think about it, it's like you've never had a job in your whole life. You're 27 years old. And if you do the math, you've done $100 a day for 365 yeah. days. Yeah, you that's hustle, have bro. hustled up. Like, you know, a million bucks, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, millions put together of some money to do dope. And not all of them, most of them, most of the people, well, no, a lot of the people that I met, they're not like pistol whipping people, they're not crawling through windows. Yeah, they're you know more like I mean? Jack. They're more they're like Jack. straight. Like, he said he was a snake, you know. Yeah, they're they're hustling like money he was, not now. Like, out of people one way or another. These are the people I deal with every day. Yeah, yeah. oh, bro, bro, I was gonna ask you. Like down there in an open air market like that. Yeah. Where like where is the money coming from? The outside? Because it seems like so like when you get loaded, when you start getting doing drugs, right? You isolate from people that don't do drugs and you stay around people that do, do drugs, you stay by yourself. So everybody down there is like fucked up. Mm -hmm. So where's the money coming? Like do they just kind of spange out a little bit oh, and they yeah, grab they, some they, change and then bring it all yeah, back lot, to the Lots dealers? of boosting. Oh lot, yeah, yeah, lots bet, of bet, lots bet. of people having sex. With, with right, but what, so people are coming down there and bringing the money in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Checks out, checks out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and that's that's what I've seen. There's like an arrange. I mean, the, the amount of sex that goes on down there for money is it's like is, fig. people don't talk about it, but it's yeah, it's fig, like it's yeah. it's everywhere. Jesus. Yeah. Men and women. Drugs, dude. Oh, yeah, methamphetamine yeah, yeah. is a hell of a drug. Only men buying it, but there are men and women selling it. Yeah. It's crazy. I've met. Many, Crack many, isn't many. as big out here as it used to be. I mean, guys hide it a lot more. It's a yeah. It's, a it's lot, more. It's more a embarrassing lot harder. For guys. Like when they're getting sober, it's a lot harder of a nut to crack if that's been a part of their story. Yeah. Um, women are a little bit more open about it. I think that they find a way to. It's not so humiliating. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> um, but it's yeah, that's that's that's. I've heard so many different things and it's a very difficult business to be in it's a very difficult business to run and i think everybody would like to see an answer to the substance abuse problem but i think somebody once said on uh, on some show i'm a fan of like everybody wants Arizona taxes with California benefits. And that's the problem. You know, you, you, that's, and, and I'm, I mean, from my perspective, as far as I know, there's no better alternative other than fixing the system that we have. I don't think that there's some. But that um, would take cooperation, yeah, people there, caring. There's not and, some international or like some space outside of, uh, you know, I remember working in a lot of people used to call in admissions being like, so can you come get my son? And we'd be like, yeah, well, well we can provide transportation, but we need to do a pre-screen. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't want to go. And I'm like, ma'am, that's called kidnapping. 
Those hey, do you remember when Patty, me, and Mario got, got like, dude. All right, let me we're... finish this out. Sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's enough for us to bite off today. Yeah. Oh, we're done. All I right. love you. Good job. I love you too, bro. You killed it. Thanks, you guys. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Mark.